working their entire life sometimes, decades, years, to get that science payload up there. And it's a really unique laboratory environment. The microgravity environment, the space environment, the radiation environment, like you heard talked about in those videos, provides an opportunity to do science that we just can't do here on Earth. Yeah, and to think that what we do on the International Space Station can fuel future Artemis missions, I think the fact that they go hand in hand is really cool. All right, so let's take some more social media questions. Uh, social media is buzzing right now since we launched about 48 minutes ago. So why don't we take the first question, I think again from uh, actor, oh no. Let's see, Kayla, how do you feel after a launch? <laughs> Super inspired. I mean, we talked about it earlier with the Red Crew and in the moments just after launch, but this is really the culmination of a giant team effort. It takes every single member of our team to pull off a successful launch. It's incredibly complicated, incredibly challenging, and in some cases kind of dangerous for a Red Crew team who went inside the blast danger area to make a fix that was critical today's launch. And so to see the team succeed and feel that excitement was incredible. Uh, I really still have um, Charlie Blackwell Thompson's words ringing in my head. The fact that she said the harder the climb, the better the view. Absolutely. 100% correct. All right, next question is from actor Jack Black. He starred in, in a movie called uh, Apollo 10 and a half. He has a question for Kayla. Okay, Jack's final question, I promise. <laughs> Let's talk about Orion. How long will it take for Orion to fly around the moon and come home? And what's that re-entry gonna be like? Sounds like it might be a little hot. <laughs> Coming in hot. You're exactly right, Jack. It is a 26-day <laughs> mission that we have planned for Artemis where it will go to the moon, go into a distant retrograde orbit, so we'll get a few close flybys and then some time in deep space past the moon. And then, yeah, that re-entry is going to be something else. It's going to be 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, super hot. And so we'll be looking at how the heat shield performs just to ensure that it'll be able to protect the crew for that speed and temperature. That's half as hot as the sun. Yes, it's incredibly hot, um, so we rely on that she heat shield to keep our systems and our crew safe, um, but we expect that it'll perform well, but we're excited to see how it, it does in about 26 days. Okay, uh, one last question from social media. What qualifications are required to become an astronaut? Um, you have to study STEM. You have to have a master's degree or higher in a STEM field. But besides that, we're looking for people who are awesome team players. So there's a lot of different roads to become an astronaut. We seem to be getting a lot of questions about how y people themselves can become astronauts. I think that's really cool that we might see and inspire again people who might think about becoming astronauts. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you, Kayla. And thank you for those who sent in those questions. Uh, we are about 50 minutes after the launch of Artemis 1 and we are approaching uh, the next critical milestone. That's Perigee Ray's maneuver. So let's head back over to Leah and Mission Control. Thanks, Megan, and you're right. We are coming up on Perigee Ray's maneuver about two minutes from now. Uh, we are now 51 minutes into the flight of Artemis 1 after lifting off at 1.47 a.m. Eastern time from Kennedy Space Center. The vehicle now traveling over 14,600 miles per hour. So during Orion's orbit of Earth, it reaches an apogee and a perigee. The apogee is the highest point above Earth's surface and the perigee is the lowest. Therefore, this perigee Ray's maneuver is a firing of the ICPS RL-10 engine and it's going to raise the lowest point of Orion's orbit over Earth. This also included a checkout of Orion's systems and any adjustments to the solar arrays. All four of those solar arrays, as you can see, are swept back. That's going to keep them from having any loads imparted that might damage them uh, for use later in the mission. This also, uh, the perigee rays maneuver, will put us in the proper position for the translunar injection burn. That's that really big and long burn that we need to send us to the moon. We're about one minute away from the perigee rays maneuver. This is a shorter burn. It's a less than 30 seconds. About 45 seconds until the perigee rays maneuver.
coming up on 53 minutes into today's mission, and we are standing by for the start of the perigee raise maneuver. Again, this is a firing of the RL-10 engine on the interim cryogenic propulsion stage. It's less than 30 seconds long. And we have confirmation of perigee raise maneuver ignition and full thrust. This is a live view from the spacecraft. Again, a really short burn. We're standing by for the cutoff. And we have confirmation of perigee raise maneuver cutoff. Flight dynamics officer reporting on the loops here at Mission Control Houston that it was a good burn. We are now 54 minutes into the flight, Orion traveling 14,700 miles per hour, and that was the perigee raise maneuver lifting the lowest part of Orion's orbit around the Earth and putting us right where we want to be for the translunar injection burn. We're looking for that translunar injection burn to happen about one hour and 26 minutes after launch, so about 30 minutes from now. That'll be that long burn that helps us break free from the pull of Earth's gravity and commits the spacecraft to a lunar trajectory. So with successful completion of the perigee race maneuver, I'm going to toss it back to Megan at KSC. No, keep it. I hope you didn't miss it, but if you did, we have a quick replay of the launch here. Sounds of pressure water now 15. flowing under the ML. And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiated. Seven, six, five, four stage engines start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis 1. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. All four RS-25 engines on the core stage and two solid rocket boosters now propelling the vehicle at 128 miles per hour. Hearing good, con good control on the roll from teams in Mission Control Houston, all good calls so far. Now 30 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1. First milestone will be for the vehicle to pass through max Q at about one minute and nine seconds into launch. This is the greatest period of atmospheric force on the rocket. SLS now traveling 607 miles per hour. You're looking at 8.8 .8 million pounds of maximum thrust quiet here in the loops and mission control. The four core stage engines are throttling down ahead of